uh, across today's stage. Most of that really is coming in the back end. But although there have been gentle undulations, it's not quite as long as some of the very long draggy climbs like we saw yesterday that were climbing for 30k or so, Robbie. Yeah, not as hilly as yesterday's stage, uh, where there are a lot of those drags and small hills along the way, and then just the 1K climb up to the finish. Today is a lot flatter all throughout the stage, but uh, with this nasty three-kilometre climb right at the end, so it comes out with just a little bit more overall elevation for the day than yesterday, 1,500 and a bit today compared to 1,400 yesterday. But uh, I think the gaps are going to be much, much bigger at the top of these. So talking about who can make it to the finish, who can hang in, it's about which of the fast sort of riders can limit the damage on the climb and have anybody with them to try and help pace them back on uh, in that final seven-kilometre run to the finish line. So there is time for riders to come back if they've been distanced. Mm. But uh, for the on the climber's side and in their favour, the climb is long enough and steep enough that seven kilometres won't be enough for the likes of the sprinters to make their way back to the front unless the climbers completely sit up and look at each other, which I don't believe they will. Bit of attacking going on here in the front group. Zerkowski, he wants to get away, but covered by Engelhardt and Barac. He's just hanging on to the wheel, but this is the last last gasp with uh, just 21 seconds lead left with 17 kilometres to go. It's more a competition of who can stay off the front the longest of us. And why not? Um, I'm going to keep saying it, Robbie. They still might survive. Let's see. Although they are looking back, I have to admit. Antonio Barac having a long look back as we go across a slightly rougher bit of road. The road surfaces, on the whole, seem to have got better and better throughout this race. Those of you who were with us on Monday will remember we had some pretty rough surfaces on the way into K-Bar. Things have been a lot better uh, and we are getting into the point where we're going to start to see the shadow of the sky views of Harriet Eurowid. And there is our chasing peloton. It's really strung out under the pressure of Uno X. Now, Uno X, let's not forget, had the winner yesterday in uh, in um, Soren Walenschgold. And Walenschgold has been doing a lot of the chasing so far in that group. They've already dispensed with uh, Jonas Abramson out the back. So they're down by at least one rider at the moment, Uno X. But they definitely want to be contenders Robbie, just before we come to this finish, I just want to pay tribute to that fantastic late attack we saw yesterday from Zednik Stibar. But I want to ask your opinion on this. Do you think that drew the sting of Buitrago too soon? Because a lot of the riders afterwards were saying, like we were, they didn't really know what the climb was going to be like. Because Buitrago went after Stibar and then both of them were caught. Was it too soon? Uh, I I don't think it was too soon for Bitrago. I think it was a good move. I think they didn't anticipate that last really steep kicker. They came around the corner and the road dipped down and then kicked hard again. And I, I think that was the one that really put them over their limit, really in the red zone. And the fact that the chase was being led really hard behind by UAE, trying to bring a Formula back up towards the front, and it just, just shut them down. But I think it was a really good attack. And... Um, you know, if the chase wasn't so intent behind, they would have gone off and won the day because it was pretty much downhill almost all the way to the line after that. So uh, it was a real close call. It was a good effort. And uh, expect to see more of same from Boitrago today on the steep slopes up here to Skyviews. Look at that shot. Not quite from the top either. That's the helicopter shot looking down from the edge of where one of the switchbacks will be. There are three switchbacks on this, the most decisive climb of the Saudi tour, up to the sky views of Harriet Eurowid. The views from the top are absolutely incredible. We're going to be treated some, to some incredible podium presentation shots, as we were last year when, of course, it was... Um, our overall race winner, Maxim van Hils, who has stood on the top of it as the winner. There is a lot of racing yet to happen in the next 13 kilometres. There are 3K to go until the base of the final climb. Let me remind you, the climb starts with 10K to go. The climb itself is three kilometres long. It has three really tough, tight switchbacks on it. And then that long drag of seven kilometres, it is slightly uphill, that drag, but you can call it flat. It's a proper plateau in much the same way that yesterday's finish at Abu Raqqa was a plateau, but a slightly climbing plateau. Effectively, if you took yesterday's finish at Abu, uh, Abu Raqqa, Robbie, and then sort of pulled it, pulled it out by another sort of 7K and add a couple of kinks in, that's your finish. So it's an elongated version. And we expect that means there will be other players coming to the fore. The question is, which ones will they be? Guerrero, Groschartner, and um, 
and who was the other one that was up there with Formolo yesterday, Davide Formolo, the Portuguese rider, the uh, Grosjartner, of course, the Austrian, and Davide Formolo, the Italian. All three of them right up there yesterday and showing they are in good form. Will the longer climb be much more to their liking as we unfortunately watch Antonio Barac go straight through and out the back? Yeah, well, Jez, I think this longer climb is certainly going to be more to the liking of Davide Formolo. And uh, I would imagine also Felix Grosjartner will we'll like it a lot more too, rather than the punchy 1K climb we had yesterday. It's, uh, for those guys, it gets better and better. Uh, the advantage they have over most of those in this peloton. The longer and harder the climb, the more they will like it. But let's see if those two UAE riders can offload the rest. I was very kind to you yesterday, Robbie McEwen, and I said I won't be kind to you again. Butrago will win, there's my pick. You give me your pick, would you? I've gone first this time. I'm not allowing you <laughs> that pleasure. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Come on. I'm going to go <laughs> with uh, Formolo to go solo. Oof. Wow. Okay. I, well, he's got. If he's going to win, he's got to go solo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not much of a sprint. I was. I was so tempted to go with Jakob Hinz goal. So that's 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 my dark horse. On the front my here, we second, have Vegas. secondary. <laughs> we have Vegas Stackelangen. In fact, we have two Norwegians. Vegas Stackelangen of UAE Team Emirates. And alongside him, Sjoren Ranskold, yesterday's winner. So two big, strong, Viking-like Norwegians who are doing their bit for their team. Uh, once again, we see Pascal Ackerman going out the back. But he is a Pascal Ackerman who's looking a little bit more sprightly. And we saw him looking quite strong yesterday, Robbie, which is good to see. Yeah, it's good to see Ackerman uh, feeling a bit better. So maybe tomorrow we'll see him see him mixing it up in the sprint with the likes of Dylan Hunewegen and Jonathan Milan. So he's got a, a day of get through this stage, do a bit of work for the team. Riders starting to go out the back of the peloton now as well. So before the climb really gets underway, it's this long dragging section up. So it's uh, become too much for a lot of riders. It's in front of him, Elvich who's been working a lot all day long in the chase behind the break. So plenty of riders going out the back. Job done for the day. And now seeing if the team leader can round it off and make all that work worth the effort. Yeah, the two teams who've been doing, or well, certainly been the most evident at the front, Bahrain Victorious and Uno X as well, really emboldened after yesterday. They very much see themselves as... Uh, part of that upper echelon now. There's no kind of holding back and waiting to learn the ropes anymore. They see that. It was very clear in interviews with, with both their riders and director Sportif last night that they see themselves, this, this is the year that they really step into the very, very top level. So no holding back from Uno X. Can they make it count, though, come the finish? This is the group who are off the back of the, uh, of the main peloton. Pavel Bittner, young Pavel Bittner, still 20 years of age. For DSM. Nasty crash for yesterday. Now. Yes, he looks fully wrapped up there as well, as a number of the riders are, it has to be said. So here's Pascalon on the left for Bahrain Victorious, trying to bring Butrago safely in a position at the foot of the climb. Jack Bauer just in front of him. Here's Dylan Grunewegen already saying, see you later, my day will come tomorrow, where he'll try and match what he did last year and take two stage wins in the Saudi Tour. Uh, I'm sure now he might start to consider taking off the long sleeve jersey. Mm. It's unusual, isn't it? Whether he's um, <laughs> trying to avoid sun, oh. maybe run out of sun cream. That might be it. Um, also back there as well, Matthias Nordgaard, our late attacker on stage two as well. The tall JJ Dane Lobato. from Movistar. Now we'll get back to focusing on the front again. Now <laughs> I think you're right. You know. Um, Andrea Pascalon is trying to do everything he can, and he's really working hard on the outside there to try and bring uh, Butrago up. The green jersey is still there as well. Jonathan Milan is there, so I presume he's going to work a role. Sure, Sh and Wanschgold has done his last turn, I think. I think that was him just swinging off there. And uh, now we see lots more of the dark blue of Movistar. 
It really is filtering down that leading group. You can see it starting to bite. This is the start of the climb proper. We are on to the most decisive climb of this year's Saudi Tour. And as we just zoom out a little bit, you can start to see the run into the first switchback. There's the first turn. It continues to wind its way up. And the, the prop switchbacks proper, where it gets really steep, are up to your right, at the top right of your shot there. Still only 8% right now. It goes up to 22% in one of those switchbacks. <laughs> now it's starting to hurt, Robbie, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think there's a bit of lag on that graphic of eleven of 8%. Uh, I'd say it's well above 10 and probably up to 40 The is not how they're struggling to get uphill. This is yesterday's winner, Søren Radenskjöld, gone out the back. Work is done for the day, and he'll be hoping that Hinskjöld can take the win for Uno X. They're riding on a high. In February, on Eurosport, the host... plateau at the top. I wonder if this might be the year, Robbie, where we're treated to something of a sprint up there. As I mentioned last year, the first time it had been used, of course, Maxim Van Hils won solo, and then there was a sprint behind between uh, um, there was a sprint behind between Luca Mezgetz, Tim de Klerk and Danny Van Poppel. There's an indication of the kind of riders who can survive this kind of gradient, but the way it's being taken on right now, you can see just how hard it is. Riders having to weave left and right just to keep moving. Look at that. And this is the front of the race, yeah. let alone what's going on at the back. Yeah, incredibly steep, some of the slopes on this climb. Of course, going back to last year, that was a big breakaway uh, that fought it out. So it was uh, swapping turns all day. And who was the most resilient at the end of all of that? So it wasn't, your, it, well, it wasn't the same scenario as we're seeing today where it's been brought all back together and we're going to see all of the best climbers in the race battle it out. But that front group is being really thinned down. Another big split coming about... 10, 12 riders back from the front. So riders struggling now to stay in contact and just about to split further, I think, because the UAE team had a look Oof. at each other, a bit of a nod as Sander Hansen in the blue jersey is going out the back. Yeah, He'll be looking to get more points for that jersey tomorrow. But look at Point, and how me. steep it is. That's something like 18, 19% where he is. But UAE with Formula and Grosskartner look like they're just about to make their move with yep. a round two and a bit kilometres to the top of the climb. They looked a bit twitchy, those two, didn't they? The two UAE men, they were right there. And here they go again. This is uh, Felix Groschartner, the former Austrian champion. And he has Davide Formolo sitting second wheel. Formolo in that easily recognisable kind of bobbing style as he pulls back on the bars. And, uh, yeah, they're not the only ones who are having to weave and use the whole road to just keep moving. Jonathan Milan there in the green jersey, battling, battling our race leader to do everything he can to stay in contention with the general classification. Yeah, here come uh, the accelerations. So Grosskatner goes with Guerrero is the man that slots in. Botrago is on the back of this group. Last year's winner at Abu Raka, second overall in the general classification. And... These Formolo four is. are proving to be the strongest early on on the climb. Formolo, you can't even call any of these attacks because they're just doing everything they can to keep moving at the moment. You can see how hard it is, but they are detached now. Butrago right on the back, Formolo on the front, uh, Ruben Guerrero just behind him, and Felix Groschartner seated and looking quite good, Groschartner, actually, the Austrian. Trago now goes around Grosjean, who just leaves a little gap, whether he's suffering or just trying to force Potrago around and into position. There is the face of Formula, concentrated, little look behind. Am I doing any damage? Yes, you're doing plenty, but Guerrero in the wheel looks decidedly comfortable. Potrago just happy to be here in the group because he knows he's punchy. He knows he's got a good sprint finish compared to these guys. So he'll be liking this situation, and he'll be hoping that the UAE team just take responsibility to go but it's another acceleration by Formolo. yeah Formolo goes again and he looks good too he's aiming for the motorbike there and using it a bit of visual pacing in front of him those four still clear we have a group of four just behind them no it's forming up to be about six in actual fact this could come back together yet Robbie as well because we've got little groups clutches in a way that were a little bit more distant by this stage last year under the attacking of Maxim Van Hils. I don't know why. It looks like the peloton as a whole are labouring a little bit more this year. I wonder whether 
the wind is, well, the wind's light there. I can't believe it's pushing down the climb. It certainly looks just that little bit harder. Formolo gave it a big dig there. I wonder whether he's got one last match left in that box on this climb because he's only got about 1,500 metres left to use it. Yeah, and Guerrero, he looked good covering that attack by Formolo. Big acceleration. And initially, Potrago just let the gap go, didn't try to accelerate, just settled into that rhythm and rode his way back across into the wheel. So it's sort of almost that, that Sky or, well, the old Ineos team tactic of don't go up in the watts, just stick where you are and rely on riding back into the wheels. Exactly what he's done. And goes big attack this time. Yeah, that is much more decisive. He's used a slightly flatter set, well, flatter, a slightly easier sector there. And it looks like it's doing for Groschartner as well. The Austrian is just trying to hang on, but he doesn't need to worry too much because his teammate Formolo is using the really steep section now, the switchback. That's the last really steep switchback now. And, uh, oh, no, he's being countered. He is being countered. Guerrero now going. Yep, Guerrero, he comfortably rode across to the wheel of Formolo and said, I'll see your attack and I'll raise you another one. Where Grossgartner is the man who's been put in trouble by the attacks of his own teammate. But the advantage that he has is he can just sit at his own tempo. Formolo will slot in on the wheel of the others and Grossgartner can ride his way back. The question is if he has an acceleration of his own. We'll find out surely if he's been foxing or is purely at his limit and just struggling and trying to get over the top with this group and be of some assistance in the run to the finish for Davide Formolo. Yeah, they are not there yet. In actual fact, they underestimated the length of the climb. They have two kilometres left, Robbie, of this. You see, I don't know what yeah. it is. With it. it just seems a lot longer than last year, but they've run into the base of it so fast this time. Maybe the team's knowing from last year how important it is. Yeah, and Guerrero again. So Guerrero putting the pressure on. Formolo giving everything to stay in the wheel. And Butrago this time knowing the moment a gap goes 17 percent the gradient through this section it is just a wall this climb it's only short at three kilometers but is doing a lot of damage and the three strongest climbers we talked about at the start of the day are off the front Santi Butrago, the man from Bogota in Colombia, digs again, but it wasn't quite as hard as the one that should be opened up by Davide Formolo. Those three are detached and together, and here we go. Guerrero's time now. All three of them want to use this. They're coming up to the most active sprint point, and there's bonus seconds here too. Three, two, and one bonus seconds. Guerrero gets that ahead of uh, Butrago. So he's picked up three seconds there. They get three, two, and one. Davide Formolo just trying to stay in contact now at this stage. They're nearly up on the plateau, but they've still got a fair bit of climbing to do as we look at the green jersey. Jonathan Milan, who is battling really well today to try and honour that jersey. He, it's going to be hard anyway, but he's much further up this field than he would have been otherwise, and that is uh, hats off to him. Yep, and he's the rider from Human Powered Health that you spoke about, Embretz Vestad Badsenk. He's just ahead of a little group here, also containing Eddie Fine from Kofidis. Number 66 from Movistar is Gregor Mulberger. And Uskatel Uskari also in this group with uh, Andoni Lopez. So that little group, ah, I wonder if they've got visual contact.
and Santi Botraga. Formula says, that's racing. He's my teammate. That's what you do. You'd do the same. So head down. Get on with it. Don't worry about my tactics. You ride your own and do not tell me what to do. This is the straightest bit of road we've had today. It's the perfect antidote to what we've had the last few days with long, straight roads. We've had none of these kind of roads today. It's been constantly twisty, windy in amongst the hills and making its way around Hegra. Now we're on the very long, straight run to the finish. Seven kilometres straight, and there we've got 6.5k to go now. Slightly undulating, but net uphill until that little rise. Uh, there needs to be a bit of cohesion in this second group, though. Eddie Finet is the first rider for Coffinis, Robbie, as you pointed out. Yeah, two Coffinus riders, but also two riders from Movistar. So uh, Mulberger is there, and uh, also uh, it was uh, Oscar Rodriguez, I think. No, Will Barter is the other one here at the back of the group, number 62. So they're not going to chase because they've got Guerrero off the front. Uh, certainly Svestat Bartseng is going to give his all. But up the front, I wonder if it might be a better idea to wait very briefly for Guerrero... Uh, and the rest of the group let Grosskartner come back on so mm. if uh, Guerrero and Butrago say let's just wait that 10 seconds let Grosskartner come back then you're going to get both Grosskartner and Formolo riding rather than now they're just towing Formolo along giving him a free ride and this is the chase with Jonathan Milan a minute and a half back but with 5.7 kilometres to go, not over yet. It all depends no. on the cohesion yeah. in that front group. What a ride, Robbie. What a ride by him in that green jersey. And, of course, he wouldn't be riding like that if he'd just won the stage uh, two days ago. He's riding like that because he's got that leader's jersey on his back. And that is um, what we'd expect to see, but it's nice to see it on our screens. And here comes Groschartner. The Austrian looks over his shoulder, but he knows he's closing in on these three. Tell me he's going to go right past them, Robbie. Go on, please. No, I think he's going to get to the group and then he's going to start sacrificing his, himself ah, for David Formolo because yep. they know now that chasing group, 36 seconds, that chasing group, so they need to get together and start riding hard or they will see themselves caught by that group. But there's two major watchdogs in that chase. Uh, the teammates of Ruben Guerrero, as we mentioned, we've got Gregor Mulberger and Will Barter just sitting on not doing anything as our lead group now hits five kilometres to go and Grosskartner returns... And I'm sure he's just going to start working or he's just going to keep he the pace me. on. He heard me. Yep. <laughs> These are the last five kilometres of this, the Queen stage yep. of the Saudi Tour, up to the sky views of Harriet Eurowind. And we are at a pivotal point in this year's race, the decisive general classification stage. It's quite unlike last year, where we saw our winner, Maxim Van Hill, solo at this point, tucking himself down in time trial mode and staying clear of the chasing group. What we have now is much more of a race on. And this is the chase from that second group who are trying to go across to them as well. By the looks of it, it is uh, the other one of the two Movistar riders in there. Did we say that was Mulberger, I think, Robbie, in there? Yes. Who's now trying to go across to his teammate, if he can. He can see them right there. Mulberger making a good dig of this, the Austrian. So two Austrian riders in play today in the hilliest stage of this year's Saudi Tour. And the second group is blowing apart. That's a shame well, for Svastad Bard saying if it's to end like that because he's ridden well today. He was one of the uh, forefront protagonists on the steepest parts of the climb. And this is the... That's the Milan group with the green jersey in. I think we're saying that's the third group on the road. And that is an impressive ride by the, uh, the Olympic champion in the team pursuit. Well, you can this see group have really found each other now. Yep, so we've got uh, Formolo. He's also not shirking the work anymore. And Grosskartner there in third, Botrago in second wheel, and Ruben Guerrero at the moment. Race leader on the road on GC, virtual green jersey, is the man at the back, number 61, Ruben Guerrero. Started the day 17 seconds behind uh, Jonathan Milan. Took three seconds bonus at the top of the climb, so he's at 14. Yep. Botrago took two seconds. He's at now at 17. And then it's Formolo is now at 18 well seconds. Well done, Robbie. Thank you. That is why that is why we're hooked up. I'm the mathematical numpty, and you've just done all the numbers. I'm just taking it as uh, right. that You've got all that accurate. It looks like and it. Gosh, it's a long run along this road, isn't it? There is the very right. finish point. We can see the, the sort of tower, the tele telecommunications tower there at the top. And the real decision, Jez, for GC now will come down to this sprint for the stage win because if 
Uh, Potrago can beat Guerrero in the finish. He will take the jersey by one second. So things Gregum. could flip around still. So Guerrero yep. with a three-second advantage at the moment, but bonus of 10, 6, and 4 at the finish. Well, the 3, 2, and 1 certainly helped at the top of that climb. It really spiced things up into it as well. Can Gregor Mulberger be the second Austrian to join that leading group? I think it's a big ask because uh, I think we might take these, these time gaps with a slight pinch of salt here because it's very difficult to get the time gaps in between them on this long, straight plateau. This we do know, though, is the, uh, the group of Jonathan Milan, who's now just taken it in turn to go on the front and do his best. He's had a bit of help from, uh, from his teammate, Rainer Keplinger, who's in there, but Jonathan Milan is doing the lion's share of that chasing. That very impressive podium. I, I dare I say it, one of the most impressive looking podiums in world cycling now, I think, at the very end of this, this big rocky outcrop overlooking the, uh, the Harawit Eurowid. Uh, sorry, let me say that again. The uh, Harat Eurowid Nature Reserve down beneath it and Alula itself. This is the chase on again. The second group is coming back under, uh, coming back together. It looks like Eddie Fine, who has closed that one down. It is. The coffee this man, and this is back to our leading group. Uh, it looks to me like Davide Formolo is actually doing more work, uh, Robbie, than uh, than he was before. He's, of course, he's now gone back to the back, but he was doing some quite long turns. So at the moment, I can't quite see how even it's going to be. I wonder if there's a conversation between the two UAE men here as they pass each other. No, not so much as a look. Formolo ready to go through again. This is the second group on the road. Well, I think for Davide Formolo, I, I think he will have come to the conclusion I'm not as quick as Petraga and Guerrero in the sprint. If this situation stays the same, I'll at least finish on the podium of the overall GC in this Saudi Tour. He'd come in, in in third, unless he can spring a surprise and ride away from the end of the two faster men start looking at each other and who's going to close a gap or, or jump onto the wheel when he does decide to go. So it's still a mathematical possibility for Formula to win the entire thing. This is the group of Jonathan Milan, and they're closing in on that second chase group. So Milan's group now at 46 seconds, the first chase at 22. But, of course, in front of them is the Movistar teammate of Ruben Guerrero, and that is Gregor Mulberger trying Ooh. to come across. Here's the attack of the front. Yeah, 
one of them going. I'm just looking down to see who it is. It is for Formula. He knows he's got to go early, the Italian. They can see the finish. It's right there. 1K to go to the finish. Butrago just hanging between the two. He's going to go again. Santiago Butrago goes again. Now, is it going to be enough, though? He's got a little tiny gap, and it's uh, it's Guerrero who's having to close it down. Guerrero looks like he's got great speed, but he's still got to finish that. And that's a big ask inside the final kilometre. Butrago back out the saddle again, the Colombian. But he's got company. Ruben Guerrero has closed the gap up. Yeah, so Guerrero, great power there to go back across. 500 metres to go. He's in the wheel of Botrago. Laying Formolo. off the back is Formolo and Grosskartner. Where is Grosskartner? That is Formolo who's caught them. Formolo gets a moment's rest. This is going to come down to a really dicey finale. They can see the finish line right there. And, uh, oh, if this is an opportunity here for Grosskartner to try and jump them, if he can get back on terms. Butrago started. Butrago's had to go early. It's going to be between these three. Formolo trying to come up the outside. Guerrero is leading. Guerrero is always going to be the fastest finisher in here. But what does David if Formolo got left? The Italian up the outside, but no. Ruben Guerrero of Movistar gets it's the win of the Queen stage of the Saudi Tour. And with it, well, we'll wait and see what that does to the general classification. But what a climb and what a chase back by this second and third group with the green jersey in it too. This is Gregor Mulberger working his way back in. And uh, Movistar have had a good day, not just with the stage win, but with great numbers up there. And look at that ride by Jonathan Milan. What a chase by our Green Jersey race leader. That was impressive, Robbie. That was a very, very hard finale. Yeah, that was a really hard finale. I mean, right from the bottom of the climb, it was on. And the UAE team of Davide Formula and Felix Groskart, and they split it to pieces. Botrago, as we expected, was able to follow, and Ruben Guerrero. And in the end, Guerrero took complete control. He led them through the intermediate sprint at the top of the climb. He took the three bonus seconds, two for Botrago, one for Formolo, and then there was the big attack in that, that last kilometre and a bit from Santiago Botrago, and it looked like the gap was opening up, but Guerrero was able to shut it down. It had the two UAE riders in real trouble just trying to get themselves back onto the wheel. And, in fact, that attack seemed to be the last big push for Botrago because when it came to the sprint, he just didn't have the legs left, couldn't follow the pace, and Guerrero cruising in for the win. And in the wheel, Formolo followed him across, and he took the six-second bonus on the line, four for Botrago. So it's going to be Ruben Guerrero with a handy lead in the general classification. And it's well earned and as well, isn't it, Robbie? The way he's yep. set around the last few days, he's not hidden the fact that it's all about GC for him. He's been trying to go for bonus seconds at every point he possibly could. And he rode that finale brilliantly. But I've, I've lost count of the number of attacks we saw in there as well. What a fantastic finale to a, a great stage. And that will be... Uh, Ruben Guerrero, the Portuguese riders. Um, I'll make that his fifth pro win today. Uh, the 28-year-old. So not a prolific winner, but you will remember, of course, he was the King of the Mountains winner in the Giro d'Italia, which is quite some feat in itself as well. Uh, and he showed how good his final sprint is. There is the podium that we're going to see the riders on at the very, very end. I would refuse to stand on that, I think, Robbie, if I was up there. I'm not great with heights. In fact, I'm awful with heights. And they, they put the podium. You wait till you see it, folks. If you didn't watch Maxim Van Hill standing on it last year, I, I'm going to call it, I think that's one of the most impressive podium positions in world cycling. The view, looking behind the riders when they're standing on that. It, it would be worthy of a final stage. This was the penultimate stage last year. But actually, I always think it's a bit of a shame, Robbie, that we don't have the final podium of the Saudi Tour up there. Maybe, I'll put my word out to air, so maybe, maybe next year think about doing that. Because look at that view. Here we go again, Robbie. Yeah, well, this is the sprint. So after the attack of Betrago had been shut down, stuck himself on the front. Formolo, he tries to get the jump. As soon as he goes, Betrago opens up and Guerrero, within three pedal strokes, is up and over the top of the Colombian. So Guerrero, he's powering on through Betrago. He'd given everything he had with that late attack. Davide Formolo, he swings out to the side. He's certainly going to make it onto the finish photo, but made no impression on the lead that Guerrero had. And the Portuguese man from Movistar, he took the three bonus seconds at the top of the climb. He's taken the 10 at the finish along with the stage win. And as long as he can get through tomorrow safely in the green jersey as the leader of the Saudi tour, 
he will win the GC. No more climbs to go, but it could be a windy one. <laughs> yeah, I think he might be pointing to the end of the plateau. <laughs> to slow yeah, down right a bit down there, time. just over yeah. there is where I'm going to hit the brakes. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe he's pointing down to uh, Alula, where he is going to hope to be the overall victor of, uh, of this race tomorrow. One stage to go between Alula Old Town and Morea because he's uh, where he's pointing to over the edge of the plateau is straight down to where tomorrow's big finale comes on the final stage of the Saudi Tour. Here's the result confirmed for you. Ruben Guerrero, the Portuguese rider from Movistar. Three hours and 45 minutes of racing to be the best stage of the Saudi Tour so far, I think. That was a really exciting finale. Formolo second, my pick for the day. That No, sorry, <laughs> I had Butrago, so you win on that one, Robbie. Butrago was third, Formolo second, and Groschartner so close when he was chasing back on. Will Barter, it uh, was, actually, who hung on, the Movistar American rider. Great ride out there by himself ahead of Gregor Mulberger. So, um, yeah, you've, you've done me over there, Robbie, once again. From Russia, Daniel Medvedev.